First on News Nation, Dr. Phil McGraw in an exclusive interview with The Hill's Niall Stanage speaking out about the rash of deadly mass shootings in our country and what can be done to stop them. While the doctor supports raising the age limit to buy assault style rifles and stronger background checks, he says a big focus needs to be on pinpointing the psychological and behavioral markers of potential shooters to stop them from getting guns. My point is You've already got almost 400 million guns on the street, 20 million AR-15 type rifles, and they're out there. So what are you going to do to manage the situation given that those guns are out there? And you can say, well, we'll go buy them all back. Well, you may buy some of them back, but those guns are out there. So what are we going to do? to manage the risk associated with the wrong person having those guns in their hands. Mm. And that's something we can do right now. Niall Stanich joins us now. He is the White House columnist for The Hill. Uh, Niall, good to see you. So The Hill just publishing this interview you did on the website a short time ago. Dr. Phil basically saying you can't regulate guns out of existence, but you can take steps to minimize bad actors getting a hold of them. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And not only bad actors getting a hold of them, but you can find, you use the word markers, markers of people who may in fact have access to firearms and may be at risk of committing acts of violence. That, of course, is a very, very small proportion of the total number of people who have access to a firearm. So he's talking about certain signifiers that we have got to recognize where people might be on the brink of committing some of these heinous acts, really bad. And Dr. Phil also weighing in on how politicians are handling this. Let's listen in. Do you think the political system is failing us in failing to enact those kind of <laughs> common sense measures? I think it's failing us miserably. I think it's failing us miserably because I think, and if you talk to all the politicians, nobody wants this to happen. I mean, I don't care how far left or how far right or, or whatever. I don't believe there is a man or woman on Capitol Hill that would say, of course they would not say they want children to get shot, but that they would say they want at risk individuals to have weapons of war in their hands. I think everybody would agree. The question is, how do we stop that from happening? So what do you think, what do you make of that? Because on this issue, when you talk about reaching middle ground, I mean, is there even middle ground? The question is, are you talking about middle ground among the general American population? To which the answer is yes, there is middle ground. Or is there middle ground on Capitol Hill, where the answer seems much more doubtful? Among the general American public, there is actually middle ground on things like expanded background checks, for example, which have overwhelming support from voters in both parties. Getting that enacted on Capitol Hill has proven a much more arduous task. And, you know, clearly we do have talks going on at the moment. Something may come out of those. There is the possibility of a bipartisan agreement, but it's uh, certainly by no means guaranteed at this stage. And, you know, many law-abiding gun owners feel that they are being demonized in this debate. A new poll uh, shows the American public at large may agree. Rasmussen found that 40 percent of likely U.S. voters believe mental health is more to blame for mass shootings by young men in America versus 30 percent who blame access to firearms. Is D.C. failing to address the mental health aspect adequately? And, and also, how do we explain the lack of mass shootings in other countries where they also have mental health issues? Well, I mean, those two issues that you mention are related. On the one hand, obviously, the provision of mental health is important. It's important in a general sense to the overall population. And there, to be fair, DC hasn't really done that badly. I mean, way back in the late 1990s, it was mandated that large insurance plans had to treat mental health the way they treat physical health. There are all sorts of issues with people being underinsured and all of that, not having access to mental health. But the second point that you raise is very important. The per capita rate of gun fatalities in this country are about 10 to 12 times what they are in Western Europe. Now, is our mental health care really 10 or 12 times worse? Or is that a question that brings us back 
to the firearms question and the access to firearms. That's really the core of this issue. All right, Niall, uh, interesting interview. Look forward to seeing the whole thing. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.